To up your style game, check out HypeLitStore.com to find some of the latest trendy designs with the Space Galaxy hoodie, Oreo joggers, or vintage Rick t-shirt, among many others. Once again, at HypeLitStore.com. This is why people stopped watching Pawn Stars. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get right into this video based on some fan reception. Staged. A common question from fans of the show is how legitimate is everything? It really is a pawn shop, but there is a team of writers whom heavily influence how everything plays out, meaning that there are actual people who do sell their artifacts or whatever else they bring in, but it's not as casual as them deciding to stop by some afternoon as the show portrays. This has become much more common knowledge and some fans as a result have stopped watching, as they are expecting realness on reality TV despite this being the situation for essentially every reality show. To expand upon exactly what I'm saying here, with everything being staged, let's hop on to the next point. Everything that comes in is known, at least when the show is being filmed. When it's operating as a regular business, this is not the case. As I mentioned, there are show writers who need to make sure the show stays popular. Part of this process is making sure interesting things are brought into the show to be featured. If they left it up to pure luck, hoping that something cool comes into the door to make things more interesting, it just wouldn't be sustainable. Now perhaps at this point, people may travel to come to the pawn shop with something very interesting in hopes of making an appearance on the show, but if you truly have something fascinating, you need to get in contact with the producers and writers of the show and make an appointment so to say. Cast doesn't work at store. Part of why things are set up in advance is that they do not film year round. There is a set filming schedule. Now 15 seasons in, over the span of nearly 9 years, the show is incredibly well known and the main four guys, Rick Harrison, Richard Oldman Harrison, Corey Big Hoss Harrison, and Austin Chumley Russell are very frequently recognized, especially in the city of Las Vegas where their store is, and they also live. I'm saying all of this because they no longer work at the actual pawn shop. They come into film episodes, but besides that, they never work any other shifts. This is for a few reasons. Due to the success of the show, they are wealthy at this point and have no financial need to work regular shifts. Secondly, when they appear in the store, it is guaranteed to disrupt business, as it is a legitimate pawn shop when they are not filming. They actually have an entire section of the store dedicated to merchandise of the store slash show. They will also set up a place there to take photos and sign autographs with fans when they visit. And this also is because it is illegal to take pictures while transactions such as that takes place in the pawn shop are going down. It's against Nevada law, so in order to not break the law, they can't have this be an actual pawn shop while they are filming. So your chances of appearing on the show by coming in someday is not going to happen at this point unfortunately. Once again, there is actual business happening even on the show technically, but everything is heavily vetted in advance to ensure it is truly entertaining. Rooting. I think due to all of this, with them now being incredibly successful financially, the whole rooting for a small pawn shop storyline that fans were a part of is no longer sustainable. By this I mean that in the early days it came off as some average guys that say some occasional funny statements while seeing some heated arguments during deals. Fast forward to today and the cast members are certainly millionaires and have even demonstrated their wealth, Chum Lee and Big Hoss especially, not to say that prior to the show they were doing poor Poorly. No, that's not the case, but they're definitely doing great now, which can deflate their relatability. It's hard as a viewer to see yourself in their shoes compared to the early days, so to say. On the show at least, they do still seem to have that spark of their group dynamic. They all work very well off of each other in terms of witty remarks going back and forth. But yeah, just once someone becomes a millionaire, it's a little harder to be like, hey, I could see that guy on the street and probably become friends with him. And then also having that kind of underdog storyline of wanting to see them do great, while well, it no longer exists at all as we know that they are doing incredibly well. <music> Item valuations are liberal. By liberal, I mean that they are on the high end of what they could be worth. This is done intentionally to create more conflict between the seller and whoever is working. This secret came from one of the show producers themselves. It was leaked by them. The way this works is the experts are hired by the show producers, and of the experts that are brought in, they are the ones that are willing to value an item for much higher than it likely truly is worth and will be sold for. 
As I mentioned, this is to create more drama to keep everything more interesting. This is just another type of lie, I suppose to say. I mean, it's all in the name of entertainment, I suppose. But still, it just takes away from that level of authenticity when all the times you get these ridiculously high valuations and the whole drama is, oh no, that's way too high, I'm gonna offer you way too low. But in reality, it's probably more realistic. It just kind of takes away in that regard. Olivia Black. It's been a few years since she was on the show, but for longtime fans, she certainly was a memorable co-star during her time at the pawn shop. She at the time helped breathe some fresh air into the show, being a different type of person from everyone else, which attracted a new viewer base. Once she no longer appeared on the show, though, many stopped watching. She certainly was quite the popular cast member and was even beloved in the store. By her bosses and co-workers, they all enjoyed working with her. However, not too long after the show, when she first started appearing, she was fired. Fans understandably reacted with confusion and some anger, and once again some just stopped watching. Although it was not the guys at the shop who fired her, it was actually the producers of the show. The reason is that it was discovered that she had worked in the adult entertainment industry, mostly doing photo shoots with little to no clothing. Pawn Stars producers decided they did not want to be associated with that industry at all, and Olivia being that connection, she was told to leave the show. Rick Harrison had to say this regarding the situation. Quote, I never fired her. She's out doing her own thing now. It's just the production company did not want her working there anymore. What she does in her personal life is her business. Following her not being allowed on the show, she still could work at the store, and she did for a little bit of time, but fans no longer were able to see her. She no longer works there, though, being quoted saying, It was very apparent my time there was done. As of today, she is active on social media and has returned to the industry she was fired from, Pawn Stars, for being a part of, now at an amateur level. Legal Trouble While watching the main guys on the show, they still do come off as your average guys, like we have discussed, but perhaps have changed a little in recent times due to their success. However, one element that really breaks the illusion is the fact that the guys have been in some serious legal trouble. The harmlessness suddenly is non-existent. Here is a couple examples. Corey. A few years ago, not long after the show becoming a massive success, the Harrisons and Chum Lee were introduced to a new lifestyle accompanied by millions of dollars. Big Hoss, being the youngest of the four, may have let some of the newfound fame get to his head. At a bar, he and another customer got into an argument. To try to calm down the situation, a deputy and security guard approached the two. In response during the altercation, Corey Big Hoss shoved the deputy and the guard. He was sent to the Big Bear Lake Jail in California for investigation of battery and resisting arrest after the incident. He was held in a drunk tank for a couple of hours to sober up and was later released. While not the most major of things, we often see Big Hoss in the light of, oh hey, he's a very nice guy, which I'm sure he is in general. This was just a slip up, but for some it can be a bit of a turnoff. Chumley. Meanwhile, with Chumley, he was arrested and as a result is currently on probation until 2019. As long as he stays out of legal trouble, he should be fine in the long run. Two years ago, in 2016, police came to his home with a search warrant due to Chum Lee being in the middle of a sexual assault case. When police searched his home, they found multiple illegal substances among other things. Officer Larry Hadfield of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department said this, During the course of a sexual assault investigation and search warrant regarding Austin Lee Russell, detectives found illegal substances like methamphetamines, marijuana, and several guns which he's prohibited from owning, which resulted in his arrest. In case you didn't know, Austin Lee Russell is Chumley's real name. He ended up not being arrested for the ongoing assault case of the time, but he was arrested on 19 accounts of drug possession charges. Yikes, just kind of like Corey, except a bit more extreme, especially with the sexual assault case, which we're not touching on here exactly, but with the drugs still, it does break the illusion of, hey, Chumley is such a sweet guy, when in reality, he does some stuff that may not be approved by his grandmother, so to say. No variation. Finally is a point that is subjective, I suppose, but 15 seasons in and the show hasn't evolved at all. Maybe I shouldn't work in reality TV, then as the show was still doing well, fans enjoy the format of learning about the items brought in, added with the occasional drama between the seller and cast member working, and also inter-cast member drama that takes place with jokes as well. Overall though, for a show that's been on for 15 seasons, absolutely nothing about the format has changed. 
Maybe if they tried new things, new fans would tune in. Then again, that could also turn off the large dedicated fan base if they did try something completely different, and it would be a surprise to change something nearly a decade in. I'm just bringing it up though as a possibility that may be limiting it to growing to bigger audiences. Thank you all for watching, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, goodbye.